Hello there, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a return to normalcy, more or less. You know, remember, we had kind of a crazy few few videos, if you were if you were paying attention. You know, we, we stopped in to see the happy-go-lucky penitents at the sepulcher of the Redeemer, courtesy of Jan Dismus Zelenka. We introduced our new proprietary label, Tinnitus Classics, starring Peepo in John Cage's inimitable four minutes and 33 seconds of whatever you have four minutes and 33 seconds of. And best, and certainly not least, we surveyed the complete original works of Pierre Boulez, a survey that took 25 seconds to be able to say, forget it, they all suck. And that was just a marvelous experience because I, as I knew, it brought out all of the, the avant gardenics and Boulezians out of the woodwork. It was wonderful. It's like poking an anthill with a stick and all the little critters come out to express their venom at what they regarded as the disdain expressed for their hero. And I remember, I remember very, very vividly when I was running the Khan Classical Music Awards, one of those years we gave a Lifetime Achievement Award to Krzysztof Penderecki. And he was able to come, and he was a, he's a lovely, lovely man. I, he was unfortunately passed away recently, and I'll be doing a talk on a lot of his orchestral work sometime soon. But he gave a great acceptance speech where he talked about, you know, the, the moral and aesthetic bankruptcy of what he termed the sclerotic avant-garde. And so all of these sclerotic avant-garde came popping out, and they're still popping out as a result of my little Boulez video. And I think that makes it a healthy exercise. But now we're going to return to what passes for normalcy and talk about Malcolm Arnold's dances. Fabulous, fabulous works, delightful. Some of you already know them, I'm sure. Now, Malcolm Arnold, whose symphonies and other works we're going to have to deal with at some point because I love Malcolm Arnold. You know, he was a trumpeter originally. He became famous to most of us as a name, as the composer of the movie music for the classic film, The Bridge on the River Kwai, which starred David Niven and was totally fabulous and just an exciting movie. But the irony, of course, is that the big tune in The Bridge of the River Kwai was the Colonel Bogey March, which wasn't by Malcolm Arnold at all. It's by Kenneth Alvarez. You, you know, Alfred, you know the tune, right? right? I mean, you, you've heard it, right? That was a song when we were little kids. We, I mean, whatever words there may have been to it, it was it was a household product song. You all know it, right? Comet, it makes your sink turn green. Comet, I'd rather use Mr. Clean. Comet, it makes you vomit. So get some Comet and vomit today. Remember that one? Anyway, that's, that's the Colonel Bogey March by Kenneth Alford, and that was in the Bridge on the River Kwai, and it was not by Malcolm Arnold, but it made him famous because everyone thought it was by Malcolm Arnold. In real life, Malcolm Arnold also wrote some pieces with tunes that were just as good, and his suites of dances from the British Isles are among them. I mean, they are wonderful works. There are two sets of English dances. There are Scottish dances, Irish dances, Welsh dances, and Cornish dances. And they have four dances apiece. And I played all of the English dances uh, in one of my fabulous community orchestras. And and we did the, the Scottish dances as a band work because uh, Arnold wrote marvelous, marvelous music for band, um, being a brass player himself. And the wonderful thing about these pieces, which I understood having performed them now, is that is, is that they're actually scored for a very, very basic orchestra. None of them are, are beyond the ability of what you might call your basic community or provincial orchestras, but they sound marvelous. They show all of Arnold's genius as an orchestrator. And of course, the reason for that is that he's not emphasizing the strings. I mean, not that they don't have anything to do. They get beautiful tunes to play. But by and large, the woodwinds and the brass, which are what you never have problems getting in community orchestras, you always have problem fighting in a violas and cellos and sometimes violins, right? But 
but what Arnold does is he really scores for you know equivalent sections of the orchestra with plenty of virtuoso brass writing and and woodwind writing so all of the brass and woodwind people who I have to confess tend to be the fun people in the orchestra and the percussion there's lots of very effective percussion we all show up. We all show up with a will because it's fun to play the stuff, you know? And so, you know, the string players, hopefully you can get enough of them to do the music. And we managed to do it. And they are lovely, absolutely lovely. And there are only three complete recordings that you need to worry about. They're semi-complete. They're all a little bit different. And, or two of them are different. And the reason is because uh, in the 1950s, Malcolm Arnold, took his eight English dances, that's two sets of four, and, and added uh, two little movements, um, a polka and, and a something else, a fugue or something like that. Yes, no, a saraband and a polka, thank you, and called the whole thing the ballet solitaire, which was staged by Kenneth McBillan at Covent Garden. And in that form, it also became extremely popular. And so you have these various versions of the work. Now, two of the recordings, which I'm going to talk about, and here they are, bingo, have the complete solitaire ballet. One of them does not, but it's the only one, and that's this one on Naxos, which is quite fine. Let me take it out of its thing so that we don't have so much glare, uh, with Andrew Penny in the Queensland, the Queensland Symphony Orchestra. Here it is, right there. This one is the only one that includes the, uh, the Welsh dances, which were the last set that Malcolm Arnold did. So you get six sets of dances. All the others have five, plus the Sarah Pendon polka from Solitaire. But let's talk about the recordings one at a time, and then I want to play you a couple samples, and we can, we can wrap up this return to normalcy. First, Malcolm Arnold recorded them for Lyrita. The original LP um, didn't have all this music, but later they put them all together on CD. And you get, like I said, the five basic sets, the two sets of English dances, the Irish dances, the Scottish dances, the Cornish dances, and the solitaire, saraband, and polka. This was, here it is on Lyrita, this was a major, major audio demo disc in its day. It was the Acme of the Lyrita sound. It really was. And, and I mean, we used to run around to like audio shops with this record in tow playing the LP because it sounds gorgeous. And it was only later that I realized that actually in the fourth of the uh, English dances, the brass, the, the horns kind of crack in the middle of one of their licks. I was so disappointed, but then I got over it because a little crack doesn't make any difference. They are glorious performances. Next came this Chandos recording with Bryden Thompson, here it is, uh, and the Philharmonia. And this became a demo disc for <laughs> compact discs in its own right. It was one of those great, 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 I mean, it still is one of those great, great early Chandos recordings that had that special, full, rich, beefy sound that they became sort of famous for. And, and at that time, they were specializing in just doing off the beaten path British repertoire, you know, the Bach symphonies and stuff like that. And and they have an entire Malcolm Arnold symphony cycle, which is quite marvelous. And and I still think that on balance, I mean, it, maybe it's a sentimental favorite, but but this is still my favorite recording of, of the five sets of dances, plus the Saraband and Polka. Even, even over, I even prefer it over Malcolm Arnold's own performance, just because I think it's, it's just wonderful. Um, I'm going to play you the dance, which is the fourth English dance, which uh, is the one that, that grabbed everyone's attention as an, as an audio stunner. And I'm going to play it in the Naxos recording because I have permission to use it um, with Andrew Penny and the Queensland Symphony Orchestra. Just listen to this. This is such a great sounding piece. And once you hear it, I mean, you just can't get it out of your head. That's true of a lot of these pieces. Here, listen to, listen to this.
great stuff, right? I mean, absolutely great stuff. Now, the Naxos version, as I said, is the only one that has all six sets of dances. So you have to get it. I mean, you know, you have to get it. It is, as a performance, it's every bit as good as the other two. Sonically, it's not as great as the other two, but I'm not talking about because it's not as great. It's terrible. It sounds, as you just heard, very, very good, in, you know, very well indeed, I would say. And, you know, these pieces are so beautiful. I want to play you the, the Allegretto, the slow movement from one of the Scottish dances. It's just, it's just of a simplicity and heartfelt loveliness that is, is such a marvelous thing. And I can't, I can't resist getting a dig in. Yes, you Boulezians, this is modern music too. And the fact that we like it doesn't mean that we dislike modern music. We just dislike the crap that you listen to. Anyway, have a, have a, have a listen to this. So there you go. That's the Allegretto from from the four Scottish dances, which I actually did in a band version, which was just more fun than anyone has any right to have. It really is. So these are the dances, the Malcolm Arnold dances, and they belong in every serious collection of contemporary music because they are great, great works. I could have done this talk as a sequel, a sequel to the Dvorak Slavonic dances or maybe the Brahms Hungarian dances because the dances have sequels on sequels on sequels on sequels. And it's fascinating that nobody really thought of doing something like that for the, the British Isles, which have such a fantastic fantastic and varied folk song tradition. You know, Arnold, of course, created these tunes himself. He created them in the style of the folk songs that he was copying. There's a marvelous one. I, I'm not going to tell you which one it is. But if you saw Monty Python's The Meaning of Life and that fabulous production number, Every sperm is sacred, every sperm is great. If a sperm is wasted, God gets quite irate. Remember that? The anti-birth control song? Well, Malcolm Arnold has a number in these dances, which is, is actually it was written first. So let's say Monty Python has a number. It is a type of song. It is a song a song category, a, a marching workers sort of protest hymn like it's a Salvation Army song is what it is, actually. And and there's one of them in here. And you could fit those words to it absolutely perfectly. And I can't help but wonder if uh, the Michael the Michael Palin and John Cleese and the Monty Pythoners weren't aware of the Malcolm Arnold dances. They certainly knew their Salvation Army tunes when they put together the meaning of life. But there you go, you see, contemporary music with such a wide and wonderful range of reference to contemporary phenomena, such as the cinema and, and all of the modern appurtenances of contemporary life. So do listen to your Malcolm Arnold dances. They are extraordinary. You're going to love them and play them frequently and show them to your friends and keep your pets happy. And there's nothing but good to be gained from knowing them. So keep on listening, folks. Thank you for joining me. Take care.